just when I think I've got out, they pull me back in. This is my review of Aston Villa 2, Chelsea 2. It should have been Aston Villa 2, Chelsea 3, based on the way that game ended. The drama right at the end, the VAR scandal that cost Chelsea. Actually, tonight was a night of referees screwing Chelsea over, to be honest, given uh, the way the Barcelona game happened with the Chelsea women um, getting some very harsh decisions against them in the Champions League. And in this game where we had two VAR calls in the game that didn't go in our favour. And I think the second one was more scandalous than the first. But it's very hard to know, really. I, I just finished my watch-along on TIFO. Um, and please go and watch the um, the watch-alongs in future. Go and uh, sign up, link in the description box below. Uh, really fun to do. And I'll be doing them for a lot more games moving forward. But hard to know how to an analyse a game like that, to be honest. I you know, because for 45 minutes, and I'm sure like a lot of you, I was sat there pretty disgusted by the performance, pretty miserable. It felt very similar to what I was watching on Tuesday against Arsenal. The team looked dead, they looked flat, but they also looked very disorganised. And it looked very simple, That you know, a very simple equation. Like Chelsea were going to have a lot of the ball. Aston Villa were going to keep on hitting them on transition. And... Chelsea would then, you know, get done a couple more times in the second half. And the fact that the game then turned so dramatically in the second half in Chelsea's favour does kind of change my view on it because from a tactical and kind of application point of view, I think that was one of the best halves we've seen from Chelsea um, in terms of how intensely they pressed, how much they were able to stifle a team that had got through them quite easily in the first half. I know a lot of us keep saying, and it's right, like what happens at half time. I would really like to know what happened at this specific half time because something changed. Chelsea suddenly looked a lot more cohesive in the way they pressed. They were able to pin Aston Villa back, stop the ball getting out for Aston Villa to, to break on us. We clearly identified on the right-hand side of Villa's defence a weakness and Noni Manawake and down that right was where Chelsea got a lot of joy in the second half. The first half, let's let's go back to the first half because obviously we can't ignore it um, despite wanting to be a bit more positive tonight than obviously on Tuesday. Um, the way the game started was was terrible. I mean, again, Noni Manawake, who would eventually you know play a positive part in this game started as he did against Arsenal where just not tracking runners not helping out his fullback in Trevor Chalabar and I know it wasn't exactly identical to the Trossard opener but there were some similarities in the sense of, of a player on that side defensively being isolated and not knowing who to press that's a consistent thing with this team of, of, of fullbacks not getting help from their wingers and the ball gets played back across the box John McGinn should probably score and maybe you say it, we're a little bit unfortunate that it goes in off Marco Correa, but it was it was bad defending and it was far too easy for, for Aston Villa to get forward. And the pattern of the game, other than that moment where Madawake, again, talk about Madawake, played a, a really good ball over to Jackson and it was called offside. There wasn't a lot of invention in that first half. Chelsea were very much getting into the fight, like towards the final third and Villa would sit in quite a deep shape, quite a structured shape. And it would be very difficult for Chelsea to break them down. They didn't look like they had a lot of ideas. And then Villa would be able to be patient, wait for their moments to strike and then hit Chelsea on transition. Very much looking for Ollie Watkins, who of course is such a threat in those areas, especially down the left flank. And um, it wasn't that much of a surprise that the second Villa goal came in, in the way the game had been moving. You know, Chelsea, despite having 70% of possession, weren't doing a lot. I know Jackson hit the post, um, but these were... That was freakish in like long periods of Chelsea not doing that much and, and the game kept on looking like it was going to flow in that direction and Chelsea, were it was going to be too easy for Villa to exploit Chelsea. The second goal, do you blame um, Petrovic? Do you think he should be better, doing better at his near post there? I think that's a big question, but just the lack of pressure on the ball from Chalibur and others there, the ease to which Villa and other teams are able to score against Chelsea, it's just very hard to take. And uh, knowing how hard it is for Chelsea to score a goal on top of VAR shenanigans as well, it just shows you how poor defensively we have been this season. There's, you can't get around it. And again, that was a half that looked bad on so many in, in so many areas, the players and Pochettino from an organisation point of view, it, all all the flaws were there on show. So I, I thought at half time it looked set that Chelsea were at least going to lose the game. They could lose it more heavily. 
But as I was saying, the the game turned at half time, and I think I've got to give credit to Pochettino. I've got to give credit to the players and how intense they they came out and they consistently targeted that right flank where Madawake was and. He got in some good areas. His execution wasn't always amazing, but he was clearly causing Luca Dean a problem. And sooner rather than later, Gallagher was pressing up a little bit higher in that second half too. And that made a big difference because then you had Gallagher, Jackson and Palmer pressing. And and that's very difficult for teams, especially Palmer and um, Gallagher being good pressers, intelligent pressers. It's hard to get round there. And Chelsea were starting to turn over the ball inside Villa's half rather than having to build up slowly with all of their defenders back. And that's where the first goal came from. Really nice uh, pressing, harrying, win the ball back. I think Gallagher would have, we would have got a penalty if the ball didn't go in, but Madawake sharp, gets there, puts the ball in the back of the net. A goal he needed given the criticism of him over the past week or so. And the game completely turned. I mean, Madawake, as I say, was was always someone that looked direct, but Palmer started to get into the game a lot more. Gallagher was as well. Um, Chelsea just looked like, and also I've got to give credit because they gave man of the match to Caicedo it was also the players behind the attack that made that press work so well because as we know with pressing everyone has to do it it has to be a cohesive thing you have to be in a very tight contained shape cohesive because if you're not the spaces are there to exploit that's what Chelsea was so much better at in this half and so much better from a pressing point of view than I have seen them for months and months on end of how cohesive they were at stifling Villa of making sure when a loose ball would come out, when a, an attack would break down, a player was there to win the ball back. Sometimes that was Badi Ashil. There was one specific Caicedo tackle that led to a Madawake chance that was wonderful. The timing of the tackles were good as well. Um, so all round, I think from a performance point, there's, there's so many positives. And um, you, you did feel that a chance was going to come for Chelsea. And it, all right, it wasn't a clear-cut chance, but it was the brilliance of... Conor Gallagher at that end where Enzo Fernandez scored a, a wonderful goal um, it, back in February. Chelsea players like scoring some worldies down that end. It wasn't quite the same, but brilliant left-footed curler. Olsen had absolutely no chance. And um, the players, you could see the players, they felt there was something still in the game. They weren't just going to be content at 2-2. We have to mention that Ollie Watkins had a chance that you would have expected him at least to hit the target. He kind of blasted it over. But Villa didn't really do much in that second half. And that was quite surprising to me. And as I say, structurally, I think you've got to give credit to Pochettino and the players for, for making it so because it was so the opposite way in the first half. And then Dezassi comes on for an injured Silva. Cassidy comes on. Palmer has an incredible chance where he almost... He has to score that, but it was a good save by Olsen. And then... Badi Ashil goes in on, I think, Diego Carlos from the corner and is able to hook the ball back towards Dezassi. Dezassi heads it in. Now, I was already kind of like slightly tempted to not celebrate that much because I thought Dezassi might be offside. Saw the replay, he wasn't offside, but I knew VAR was coming. I, I knew the threat of that VAR was coming at some point for something. I think the thing that angers me more is it comes from such an innocuous thing that is so rarely called upon and is so inconsistent. And this is where the PGMOL deserves scrutiny. They deserve criticism. They deserve to be questioned. The idea that officials in this country do not deserve to be questioned. I mean, who do they think they are? Like genuinely like accountability. I talk about accountability from a Chelsea perspective. Accountability from PGMOL is so critical to ever hope to see any sort of improvement. And we've seen it so consistently but I think I'm like a lot of people who, you know, I, I wanted VAR to succeed. I wanted it to do well. Um, but there is an absolute reality that it does kill emotion at times. Uh, because after the Jackson goal in the first half, I wasn't really celebrating that much. I celebrated a bit more for the Dezassi one. But you do naturally restrain yourself a bit at times because you think you know how VAR works. But we know that that foul, and it, it's one of those, right, that collision... Is A, is it clear and obvious? But B, is it one that in any other area of the half is being given as a foul, especially when a player doesn't go down? No, it isn't. And I think that's an easy question to answer. You know, I, I, I think if that was the other way around, I don't think I'd be... I, I'm being honest here. Maybe you don't believe me if you're a rival fan, fair enough. But I don't think it, if it was the other way around, I'd be sitting here and going, yeah, it was clear and obvious. Like, it just looked like a coming together... 
and it, it felt like not something to me that was so blatant that it needed to be overturned and Villa have got away with one and Chelsea have been hard done by and that could have been an incredible ending um, and it's, it's, it's harsh isn't it it's harsh to, to have that moment that joy that potential memorable win taken away from us but we have to be honest and say at half time if you would have said it would end 2-2 in that manner I think we all would have it, most people would have laughed at you and I think you, you wouldn't have been irrational for doing so based on the way that first half had gone so it's very weird you know I said this post Arsenal I still stand by every, everything I said against Arsenal like it's it's the club is still in, in a very difficult place I don't think the squad is to the highest level I don't think Pochettino is doing an amazing job I don't think the hierarchy at the club um, is doing an amazing job either. The, those concerns do not change overnight. And it's not me flip-flopping when I'm more positive when Chelsea don't lose. Uh, because that's just what fans do. And, and, and I'm going to give praise when I see it. I'm going to be happy when I see players score and, and see the team respond. And they did do a lot of things in that second half that people have been criticising. Lack, you know, We talk about lack of leadership, lack of character, lack of ability to respond to adversity. They did that in abundance in the second half. I think the big question for me is like, where was that in the first half? And can we see more of that precision and that aggression for more of the games moving forward? Because if Chelsea play like that on Thursday at home to Spurs, they've got a chance. If they play like that for the rest of the season, they've got a chance of doing something. Um, we know precision and, and finishing is still a problem with this team. We saw it again tonight. But, you know, all of that combined, it, it shows you that was such, you know, I talked about the Arsenal game being a great representation of Chelsea in, in, in its most negative way. I almost think tonight was a great res representation of che the chaos of Chelsea this season of how up and down they can be. We saw it in a 19-minute period that um, Chelsea were disorganised. They looked woeful in the first half and in, in the second half, they looked cohesive. They looked able to, to overwhelm Aston Villa. So it's a positive point based on where we were at half time we can't completely overwrite the negatives and i'm sure the analysis will mostly be looking at the reaction will mostly be looking at officials which i don't blame people because chelsea should have three points there's there's for me there's no argument about that but um i can't i can't completely sit here and go you know or oh, is it all, all now negative because chelsea got kind of like hard done by by var like nah like i i am positive with the way the team responded um i think it's just about where was that type of performance in other games recently? So those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below and I'll see you again very soon. All the best.